Hello everyone and welcome back to Cobain History. Today we are going to have a look at the Domius Aria or Nero's Golden House. We talked about it a little bit in the Colosseum episode but now we will actually take a look inside. So a quick recap of what I said in the Colosseum episode. There was the Great Fire of Rome which destroyed a large part of the city and after that Nero decided to build his lavish palace complex at that location. Where the Colosseum would later be there was a large artificial lake. In front of that was the entranceway to the complex with the large colossus of Nero. And to the northeast of that, on the Opian Hill, there was a Domius Aurea building itself. And it's that building where we will have a look at in this video. After Nero died it was buried by Trajan to make room for his bathhouse which he built on top of it. It's actually because it was buried that we can actually visit it today and see it in a pristine condition, relatively speaking. So this entrance building which we see now and the entrance hall which leads to the actual Domus Aria was a later construction by Trajan when they were in the process of burying the palace. So here we have a map of what has been excavated of the Domius Aria. The black lines indicate the walls that were there in Nero's time, so the actual palace walls. And the red ones are the walls added by Trajan to give support uh, for the earth that was piled on top of it to bury it. So you can see here is the entrance and we had to go through a hallway made by Trajan to get to the actual palace. When we entered the palace we ended up around here. And this was actually the edge of a courtyard. You can also see the pillars which would have supported the overhangs. And to the left where the wall is now would be the courtyard. So along this courtyard to the south there were multiple rooms and at least a few of them had uh, specific color themes. For example you could have the blue room or the red room or the yellow room which you can kind of see by the paint that is left there. On the floor we can also see the remnants of the sort of mortar that was used to keep the marble floor slabs in place. These marble slabs were removed when Trajan buried the building because they were valuable and he could reuse them in the construction of his bathhouse. And this is what used to be the courtyard, now separated by walls. These walls had to be built by Trajan to give it more support, otherwise the earth on top would have just collapsed. So if we go back to the right, in the room where we were earlier, to the right of that there was a room that wanted to create a sort of grotto feeling. At the end over there you have a sort of waterfall where water flows down to give that cave-like feeling to it. Here we see a depiction of what is thought to be the fight between David and Goliath, which plays into the grotto feel which wanted to emulate the feeling of classical mythology. Throughout the structure there would have been a lot of pools in the middle of rooms and fountains in the hallway and a lot of walls would be decorated in lavish marble and others would be painted. Now the marble walls we won't be able to see anymore because Trajan took them to be used in the bathhouse but the painted walls we can still see. So here are some pictures of the painted walls throughout the building. Here we can actually see remnants of the bathhouse that Trajan built on top of it. The hole we see there is actually a hole that leads to the water system which was used to transport water to and from the bathhouse above. This was a palace built for entertainment. There is no evidence of doors on the rooms and they would face towards the outside. The design of the structure made it so there was different plays of lights at different times of the day in the different rooms. This was a servant's hallway, and you can see even here you have the lavish paintings on the walls. As we went further in the structure, we came across this mosaic tile floor. This floor was left here by Trajan because it probably wasn't worth the work of removing all the single tiles to be used elsewhere, so they just left it here, which is how it would have been in Roman times. Now we've come to the center of the structure. This is the octagonal room and it's thought that Nero had a contraption built here that when people entered they would be sprayed with perfume and rose petals would fall from the ceiling. This is an early example of the use of Roman concrete with a dome similar to that of the Pantheon, only smaller. 
and it also has the oculus in the middle to let light in. The walls would have been decorated in marble and over there you can see a large version of the waterfall that we also saw in the grotto earlier. So water would stream down here and there was drainage at the bottom. We can also see that purple paint was used which was very expensive and hard to get and it was a color that specifically represented the emperor. This purple paint and the extensive gold leaf that was used to decorate the villa really shows that no expense was spared. There was a main artist that painted most of the Dormius Aria. His name was Famulus or Fabulus or Amulius. The sources aren't really clear on that. Sources from Roman times claim that the artist painted the Minerva which always seemed to be looking at you no matter which angle you're looking from. The Domius Aria was a sort of creative prison for this artist. That's why we see the work of this artist mainly in the Domius Aria and not in a lot of other places. Sometime in the 15th century an artist went down a hole in the park above and ended up in the Domius Aria. He was amazed by the paintings he saw and over time more and more people went down, especially artists, to have a look at the work. So this Roman art inspired a lot of artists from the time and also in later centuries. Back in those days most of the structure was still filled up with rubble. So when they visited they were actually standing on top of the rubble and they could only see the ceiling and also touch it. So that's why we can also find a lot of signatures at the top of the walls and the ceilings of the artists that visited here. It was a sort of artistic pilgrimage to come down here and write your name on the wall. However, the discovery of the Domius Aurea led to moisture being able to go through the structure and thus starting the decay of the paintings. Here we see an example of an area where moisture got in. The archaeologists, while being done with excavating the structure, they are still working on restoration. At the moment they're actually rebuilding the park above to make it harder for moisture to get into the structure. And once that is done they can start restoring it. So that was my video about the Domius Aria. If you want to check out the video about the Colosseum I did, you can click on screen now. And if you want to see more history related videos of mine in the future, you can subscribe.